Welcome to the Dotcast. Today, Ricky Keeler chats with Washington Nationals prospect, Taylor Gushu. Thanks. Uh, first off, thanks for taking the time uh, to talk with me. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem at all. So let me get to your uh, story from last season because we, we usually see players get traded at the trade deadline, but you got traded at the end of the season in September. What was that trade story like for you, and did it really change anything as you're finishing your season getting traded like a few weeks right after that? Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it was definitely weird. I mean, new experience for me, never been traded before. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it was just a uh, whirlwind. I mean, you know, I, I, it was two weeks after the season had ended. So I, I just started my off season job. It was my first day of my off season job. And I got the call from Pittsburgh telling me that I'd been traded. So, um, and then the Nationals called me and they asked me to come to Instructs for a little bit, you know, just to uh, shake some hands and, you know, see some faces and, you know, get to know everybody's name. Um, and then, um, so I had, a, I had a, you know, I had to quit my off-season job, like, as soon as I got it. And then uh, uh, go to Instructs for a couple weeks and then come back and then um, uh, just prepare for spring training. So, I mean, that was that was pretty much it. I mean, you know, preparation was the same, you know, uh, for, uh, you know, I, I mean, the preparation in the off season is the same, you know, every year you just want to get better, uh, and get ready for, you know, the grind of the season. But yeah, I mean, it was a new experience. It was definitely cool to be a part of that's for sure. Um, but yeah. I'm sure there are great things about uh, both organizations, but what is the biggest difference you've seen between, the Pirates organization and your short time with the Nats? Um, I mean, the Pirates are, you know, stand-up organization. I mean, they, they really strive to do, you know, everything the right way. I feel like Nationals are very similar in that aspect, you know. Um, you know, I, I feel like both organizations treat their players with a lot of respect and they want to see everybody, you know, improve um, a lot. Um, probably the biggest difference, I would say, I mean, <laughs> the only uh, – Really, you know, the only difference, like pretty much on the field, is I get to wear my pants down now, and I'm so happy about that. Like, she has no <laughs> idea. What did you take away from last season as your team in Bradenton made a run and won the Florida State League championship that you're carrying into this season? Um, you know, I learned a lot about you know how to how to grind like together as a team. Um, just. Uh, you know, learning, like, handling a pitching staff, that's for sure. Um, my manager was Mikey Ryan. He taught me a lot about um, uh, just, the, you know, the grind of every day and how to make it through the day, like, as a catcher. Um, and then he helped me, you know, helped me out a lot with, you know, game calling. You know, just, I mean, I had, a, you know, I had Brian Esposito as a manager. I had Mikey Ryan as a manager when I was over in Pittsburgh. But um, I feel like they, um, they really helped me, you know, develop as a catcher. Um, last year um, with that team, and then um, I don't know. We just we just found a way to flip a switch at the end. Got really hot, and um, you know, so the, we, I played together with those guys for that was the third year I'd been with that team. Um, it was like a core group of guys that you know we learned how to you know uh, learned how to win. So that was basically it. I asked you earlier to compare both both organizations, but uh, what's the comparison to playing in the Florida State League as opposed to the Carolina League? <laughs> well, the Florida State League is just, uh, it's like, uh, I don't know, it's like the twilight zone of my league baseball. It's like the worst place to hit it, that's for sure. That's like not debatable. But um, that's, uh, I mean, that, that's probably the biggest difference, I would say. I mean, Carolina League is a little bit more forgiving. Um, the ball flies a little bit better here, that's for sure. Um, the parks are a little bit smaller. Um, just, I mean, you got the big, you got the big league parks with the minor league balls, and you know, it's 95 degrees and like 100% humidity. So, it's uh, it's just it's all of the word grind down there. Coming into tonight, you have 11 home runs in 26 games. What's been the key to your strong power starts this year? Um, just, you know, learn how to use my lower half, you know, and stand through the ball. I think that, you know, that's, um, that's been a big help and, you know, swinging at the right pitches, getting good pitches to hit and not missing them. So, I mean, it's been, 
it's been great. It's been really fun. <laughs> When you look at the way you guys have been able to score runs with with the lineup, especially now having Victor Robles back at the top of the order, how does that help you knowing, hey, I've got these, I got Robles and Ian Sag going, these guys at the top of the order getting on and giving you those run scoring opportunities to drive them in with a home run? Right. I mean, you know, having having them at the top of the lineup. I mean, having Victor at the top of the lineup is awesome, just because you know he's he's an electric player and. Um, he's always going to give us a good at bat and try to get on for us, and you know most of the time he does. And then um, you know everybody else has been has been great at doing that as well. I mean, you know we're having we're having great at bats one through nine, and you know that's what that's what that's what being a team in baseball is about is just you know handing off the next guy. You had the experience of winning the title last year, Brayton, but you also played in Florida for three years, got to the College World Series your first year. How did playing at a powerhouse university like Florida's in college baseball, prepare you uh, for life in the professional ranks? Um, I mean, I, I would say that, you know, playing at Florida was a yeah, huge advantage just because, I mean, pretty much every weekend when you enter into SEC play, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, it's high tension. It's, um, you know, hyper-focus. Um, and I feel like at Florida we definitely practice you know, that way too. So, I mean, once the game time came, we were prepared. And so I, I would just say that playing at Florida is just, I mean, it's its just, it was all a preparation for, you know, what, what was to come like in the future. I mean, um, it doesn't seem as big because you've been there before. So that's what, that's what I would say about, you know, playing at Florida. And I mean, it was just a regular thing there. So it was nice. As a catcher, who are your some of your favorite catchers to watch growing up? Um, I mean, I, I really liked, you know, when I was at Pittsburgh, I really liked watching Cervelli catch. I think he, his style was um, was great. I liked watching him receive. I think he's one of the best receivers in the game. Um, and then um, uh, Alex Avila, I had the opportunity to work out with him uh, two falls ago. Um, just love the way he uh, catches as well, and he, and, he, and he rakes too, so that's that's a plus. But, I mean, I, w- I would definitely say those two guys, a couple of older guys like Mike Matheny and uh, Joe Girardi, I think have been, um, you know, I, I'm huge in my, you know, development as a player as well, just, you know, the way they led and um, just how they play the game. So I would say those those guys. You mentioned the time you had at Instructs. How quick, well, I shouldn't say how quick, but how long does it take for you to adjust to learning a whole different group of pitchers? Well, I mean, I, I mean, as, as long as I'm catching them in the pen and, you know, I have been a game and it probably takes, you know, a solid, you know, three times of catching them to know, you know, to kind of be inside their head about what they want to do and then, you know, just how their stuff works against um, the hitters' stuff. So, um, I mean, I would take it. I would, I would say, you know, three three times. Um, you know, just catch them in a game to really, you know, know them um, and what they like to do. But I mean, probably the hardest thing about coming in an organization is just knowing everybody's name. So, once I learn everybody's name, then you know, I feel like the rest is easy. What are your goals for this year? Um, I mean, obviously, I mean, you know, to get, uh, to get promoted, uh, would be one of my goals. Um, uh, I mean, stats wise, I mean, I'm, I'm not, a, I'm not a huge numbers guy. Like look at your numbers during the season. I mean, if I, you know, if I, if I, if I do what I think I'm capable of doing, I think my numbers will be there at the end of the year. But I mean, you know, just take it one day at a time, you know, set a daily goal. Um, and, uh, I mean, I, I would say that's pretty much it, but yeah, I mean, just, to, just to get, you know, promoted, get an opportunity to play at the double A level, um, you know, yeah, and anything can happen. I mean, a lot of that stuff is out of my control, but, um, that's what I, that's, that's what I would say about that. And finally, to the Nats fans who are learning about you for the first time, listening to this interview, what's the message you have for them? What's that? I'm sorry. Uh, for any Nats fans who are listening to this interview and are meeting you for the first time, what's the message you have for them? I would just say I'm, I'm really happy to be a Nat. I think it's uh, 
I think it, I think it was a great thing for me uh, getting traded over here, and um, you know, hopefully, I can help the team win at the big league level one day. Um, so, you know, I'm I'm just excited to be here. That's what I would say. Taylor, thanks again for the time. Best of luck tonight. Best of luck the the rest of the way. And I'm sure we'll talk real soon. Thanks again. We'd like to thank Taylor Gushu for appearing with Ricky Keeler today. You can follow the Dodcast on YouTube by giving us a like and subscribe. Give us a like on Twitter at District on Deck. Give us a like and a follow on Facebook. And of course, the blog itself is districtondeck.com.